The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So, what do we have going on today? Well, we came out of a long weekend. Uh, down about 10 points at the open on the S&P cash. We're up about one and a half points now. The Dow's down, you know, let's call it 39. Let's update this just to make sure. Yeah, 40. Uh, NASDAQ's up 11. The Russell's off, eh, let's call it six. Uh, when we look at some of the other stuff moving, uh, crude up a little bit on uh, some sa saber rattling in the Mideast. And it's kind of interesting to me that they even care. Uh, since uh, 2012, a good hunk of the oil goes to the other uh, side of the Strait of Oman because they put in a big, uh, huge uh, pipeline so that the Iranians couldn't um, basically cut off all the oil. They can kind of cut off some of the oil, the short-term oil, uh, but if they do, then that's probably it. They'll probably move all of the uh, facilities back over to the other side, to the left-hand side of that peninsula. And that will be it. Of course, they haven't actually done that since, uh, well, it's been a while. Uh, they like to cause little problems, uh, but I don't know why they keep shipping oil from that side as long as uh, Iran is over there. Uh, maybe it's a little cheaper, but it always gives them a little bit of... Uh, leverage on the uh, Saudis and the rest of the uh, uh, Arab oil, I just would take it away from them. I don't know what it is, maybe 50 cents a barrel uh, to pipeline it over to the other side instead of doing it. I mean, you got to put it in a pipeline somewhere and then get it there. Um, then any of the firing or shooting wouldn't really bother you that much, really, unless they went in land and attacked you. That's a whole different thing. That's probably why we're up a buck seventy-eight on crude. Uh, just the thought that whatever it is actually escalates to something that truly matters. Uh, there just isn't uh, what uh, what should matter at the moment. Uh, but I guess that's it because literally, if they don't, Iranians don't attack um, that peninsula. Uh, even if they stopped all those ships, they could just move them to the other side of that peninsula, which is, like I said, something they probably should have done a while ago. I think they kind of like the fact, the Arabs uh, kind of like the fact that when uh, Iranians, the Persians, um, rattle the sword, you know, price goes up a little bit, gives them a little extra money. But uh, I don't think that there's a whole lot to it. I thought we were very close to a high in crude already. So my guess is that they were more than willing uh, to uh, give a little bit of extra uh, support to the price of crude. And what do we got? Um, crude's around $2.80 right now here in the Tampa area, but uh, eh, not as bad as it could be. Uh, what else is going on? Of course, uh, we opened up a little lower uh, went a little higher, and now it's all about earnings. Uh, we'll look at a few of those stocks uh, today. They're going to be have earnings this week. Uh, but again, it's one of those things where it's kind of a hurry up and wait. Uh, I think it's just Whirlpool after the bell tonight. Uh, let me make sure that I didn't tell you wrong. But I think that's it. I think it's just Whirlpool after the bell tonight. Yeah, Whirlpool, W-H-R. At uh, four ten today, expecting uh, an EPS of uh, three dollars and four cents, revenues of four dollars and eighty three cents. 
they could probably be the beneficiary of any real trade deal as they uh, one of the big things is to keep white goods production, uh, washers, dryers, refrigerators, that kind of stuff all here in the United States. Now that's not much, but really what happens tomorrow is we get a lot of these high volatility tech stocks uh, starting up and of course some of the, the uh, military spending, Twitter, uh, Verizon, Lockheed Martin, Coca-Cola, Procter & Gamble in the morning, uh, Harley-Davidson, United Technologies, JetBlue, Allegheny Technology, ATI, uh, Hasbro, Fitbit. I don't know if Fitbit's even anything else anymore. Uh, but certainly we have that. And then, of course, after the bell tomorrow night, it's Snap, eBay, iRobot, which had a big move last time on earnings, Texas Instruments, Ameritrade, and Six Flags Holdings. So we'll look at that. But uh, for the most part, fairly quiet. And uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on what's going on. So uh, what is happening? Well, it's, as always, a little bit of history. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. As we said, it is always repeating. Well, not exactly, but it does rhyme. On this day in 1945, Adolf Hilter, Hilter, Adolf Hitler learning from one of his generals that no German defense was offered to the Russian assault at Everswald, and Metz, uh, to all his underground bunker that the war is lost and suicide is his only recourse. Almost as a confirmation of Hitler's assessment, a Soviet mechanized corp, uh, corpse, corpse? I could pronounce it like Obama, corp, corpus, uh, corps, uh, reaches uh, Trubritzen, which is about 40 miles southwest of Berlin, which I've been to. That's a nice little town. Now, probably not so good on this day in 1945. Uh, and they liberate a POW camp, among other things. So that's about it. Uh, again, um, fairly quiet day. And uh, I don't think we have much else to say about it other than that. Uh, to, 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 and we'll talk about some of the stocks that are actually moving today we'll get into that but uh i guess uh probably the big mover today uh on earnings news was kimberly clark i think it's earnings news i didn't look anywhere <laughs> yes strong first quarter earnings on it it is a breakout with a sign of strength there haven't been a lot of those maybe one out of ten Maybe two out of 10 stocks with earnings over the last couple of earnings cycles have had legitimate breakouts. Most of them have been false breakouts where no one showed up. As they uh, used to say in the advertising business, we'll run the flagpole up in Peoria, Peoria, Illinois, and we'll see who salutes. Well, most of them not saluting too much, either failing on earnings or having good numbers and not able to break through the previous highs. Um, and we'll we'll talk about that. We got a lot of stocks to look at today. Again, uh, if you're complaining today about not having much action, I suspect that you will curse your wish for action in a couple of days. It's going to get busy. Business is picking up. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. be looking at a handful of stocks but we've got already got some email coming in and that is uh, on uh, first from Lonnie we have a couple more already you can always email me at pat at tfnn.com or you can put me uh, on the speed dial at 877-927-6648 okay what else do we have uh, okay Kimberly Clark We've got 4.4 uh, million shares already, which is a pretty good day compared to 1.4 million shares. That's kind of the average in that range, over a million. So certainly a sign of strength with volume. You got to 132.47, and we're pulling back. Now on Netflix, in FLX, uh, is Netflix toppy? What do you think of today's strong move higher? Uh, do, do, do you want to short the tax man? Let's take a look and see what uh, shorts are actually doing in Netflix. Um, do, 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 do. Um, well, you got pretty decent shorts. Uh, you got almost 30% on Thursday and 27, almost 28% on Friday. Uh, excuse me, on Wednesday, and then almost 28% on Friday. You got a lot of people hammering on this stock. Um, short interest is about what it has been the last, I'm going to call it last uh, six reporting cycles. So it really hadn't expanded or contracted. You only have about uh, two days to cover, which is the good part of it. Uh, but, you know, you, you've had kind of a, a fairly standard um, percentage here and not a lot of signs. I just don't like any kind of stock where 25 or 30 percent is a normal thing. Um, just a lot of times people get rather early on shorting stocks and that's the biggest problem. Uh, the place that I'd pull the trigger on this short if volume remains very light, I think it does. What's we have today? 8.2 million shares. It's not that bad. My guess is that this is going to go to 390, 395, or maybe even 400 bucks and close the gap. See, uh, earnings is, uh, I'm going to say Wednesday. 
on this one. I don't like uh, being shorted or uh, hanging through earnings on it. Let's check in FLX. I want to say Wednesday. Oh, is that it? It's already been out there? I thought it was coming up. No, it's not. Next date I have is July 16th. So we must have had it fairly recently. Hmm. Huh. Was that two or three weeks ago? July 16th. That would be May, June, July. It's got to be during this week, doesn't it? Yeah, maybe somebody in the den knows. Maybe this number is off. I think uh, I think I do, 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 do I have it here? I think I do. Hang on a second. I don't know. Okay. I'll have to check on that again. A lot of shorts in this, though, um, comparatively, at least high daily shorts. And generally what you want to do is wait uh, until that short number drops by about 50%. Uh, if you go back and look at uh, Tesla, that's about exactly what happened back up here at uh, about 345. And that is that you had a, a, about a 40% short interest for a couple of years, and then it slowly came down to about 30%. And it hit 20% uh, short interest at about 345 back up off this bounce for the second time just before it fell apart. And for stocks that are in trouble you are, or are going to come back down, you want about that 50% short interest uh, drop over time if everybody knows it. Uh, you know, you can look at GoPro, about the same thing. Um, I think we'll have to go back a lot farther than that, though, won't we? Um, See, okay, ninety-eight forty-five, which is October seventh, twenty fourteen, puts you in what five years ago now, eh, almost five years ago now. Um, and at that point, they ran everybody out at about a hundred bucks, uh, and that is when the thing really started coming apart. But at that point, they had a huge amount of shorts. Uh, everybody, probably that was short, were looking at. 100% losses or larger that had been shorted. And it just finally gave up. Now, if you were going to short it, what you want is exactly the same kind of patterns that you see here in GoPro and in Tesla. And that is a couple of bounces out here. And you find out that resistance is really, in this case, in GoPro, about 85 bucks. Then, when it finally doesn't have any juice after a couple of times, then the big guys get in and they start shorting this thing and you know the problem is that you you know went from 99 bucks down to 37 bucks and then bounced to 65 bucks but that's not uncommon the problem is that once if you were lucky enough to get this thing at 85 you probably want to sit on your hands and curse anybody that tells you uh that until something has changed and that is it anyway you can give me a call at 877-927-6648 and i will let you know uh, other things going on, we've talked about Boeing. It was down a little bit, but of course, uh, making a bit of a change uh, in the uh, Dow, certainly, uh, but not enough. Fairly light volume out here for all the negative press that these folks are getting. Uh, you continue to see kind of some fairly decent bottoming action in here. You got your first bounce at about 360. What was that? Three, the low of the day was... Uh, 362, 363. Um, you're probably going to come back in here and find support at about 372. Let's see what it's actually trading at right now. Uh, two, two, two. Okay. Yeah, 376, 377. So in that range, you don't have a lot of volume, 2.7 million shares. So fairly quiet on the Western front since it's come back down into there. I think one of the uh, big 
players uh, in the plane in the aviation business, the passenger market, said that they were going to buy 400 737s over the next few years. And I think that was enough uh, to tell everybody that there's not going to probably be a long-term uh, issue with this, although it's not fairly, it's not good to ever have these problems. It doesn't look to me, I guess I have a question here in the email, if this looks to me kind of like Chipotle over time, um, you just, I don't think you got the destruction that you have in Chipotle. Um, but actually, Chipotle, I'm kind of looking at this thing thinking maybe, maybe this is the one getting close to a top. No one talks about it anymore. It's quietly gotten back up here. I don't see lines in the store. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we've got crickets, crickets, and more crickets. Up one point on the S&P cash down. Well, about 40 on the Dow. I think about 30 of that is Maybe 20 is Boeing. Uh, NASDAQ uh, up, uh, let's call it 11 points. My guess is that we'll close out here today flat. It, the, all the action is going to come pre-market tomorrow morning with those earnings that we talked about. In fact, we've got a ton of earnings this week, and I've got a long list. Uh, we'll just kind of try to go through them alphabetically um, for what's happening and then see um, 
if we can see anything in it. American Airlines out this week. Um, lower highs, higher, uh, lower highs, higher lows. So, you know, you've been doing that back into the December 3rd high. So this thing's kind of winding up, probably a little bit of headwinds with higher crude prices right at the moment, but I don't know if it's that big a deal. Uh, Aaron's rents. This is a, why I probably wouldn't trade it. And I think I've traded it a few times in the past years but nothing in the last two or three years. Uh, good sign uh, on what these guys tell you about what's going on in the economy for the people that live check to check. If these guys are doing good, then generally the economy is starting to weaken. Uh, they are the first sign uh, of uh, at least uh, trouble uh, in the downtrodden of the economy. I don't see a lot in it. But uh, I will pay attention to it. A, be a bevy, a b b v, coming back and testing seventy four dollars and seventy eight cents. That's the January twenty ninth low. And yeah, let's see if there's anything really to read about that. Um, you're coming back into it with man, about eight million shares on on uh, last Thursday. Today, about man, what's called three point three million shares so far. So not much going on with that other than testing a previous low, probably on lighter volume. So there may be something in that if the market does find some footing here. Um, I don't see a lot uh, that this market couldn't be pushed fairly severely either up or down by the earnings, as I said, tomorrow morning and through Thursday night uh, and actually Friday morning this week. Archer Daniels Midland ADM supermarket to the world. Uh, what do we have on that? Talk about flat. This thing just pointed uh, back on to, to, to what is this? On 2nd of February. Uh, not a lot of juice here. Everybody's talking up farm and farm business and agriculture. This one's not giving you a clue of anything other than there's not a lot of pressure upwards or downwards at the moment. We're looking at that. AFL, which is, come on, AFLAC. Um, I dislike these folks, mostly because uh, they used uh, a joke to get rid of one of their spokespeople. I like Gar uh, Gilbert Godfrey, and uh, they did a, a horrible thing to get him off to cut their advertising budget. Um, and, uh, eh. He was a comedian. They knew it when they hired him. And then they took something that no one in the world saw or heard and made it into a big deal so they could screw him over. So not my biggest fans. Um, I, I kind of think of them as weasels. But uh, you know what? You're back into support. We're not in the right or wrong business. We're in the higher or lower business. Uh, but you're going back into this five and a half million share low from April 3rd at forty-eight dollars and twenty-nine cents, uh, with 1.2 million shares. So you're probably going to find some kind of support around there at 48 bucks. Uh, but I don't know if there's going to be anything in earnings that moves the market, other than the fact that a lot of those companies have a lot of investment. If the market's not moving well, they don't do well either. Applied Industrial Technologies, AIT, has kind of done a, uh, a uh, retracement here. Let's get a little zoomy, a little bit more zoomy in here. And then we'll take a look at this. Uh, let's go just a little longer here. The time frame. Um, let's see what we've done for a retracement so far. Well, you got the 382 retracement. That would have been 60, what is that, 62, 32. Uh, and you've got uh, 63.21 as the spike of Thursday. Uh, 65.91 would be a 50% retracement, and 69.40 would be the retracement uh, for um, the 61, or 6, yeah, 618. Um, I don't see a lot in this one, but certainly I suspect this is coming into to a lot of resistance from this down move off of September 21st last year. 
and you're back into this candle that actually had eh, some fairly decent volume for a low volume stock. But uh, I don't know if there's a lot in that. Align Technologies, this one, this gap here was on earnings back on October 25th. This thing does have a tendency to have some fairly wicked gaps on earnings. Uh, it too is done its kind of retracement. Um, see if we can get in here and close this down. We get a little closer here. Yeah, I got a little problem here. I need to fix that too. Okay. I see that, but I don't know why it's happening. Okay, we'll look at that tonight. But uh yeah, not much. Okay. Alaska Air Group. A lot of gaps in this thing. Um you know, I can't see a lot in this bounce, but $64 is probably where the only good risk reward is to probably short this. Um, you got 62.10 last uh, Wednesday. You're down, coming down a little bit off of it. Um, but you could still do a little bit more work to get this to about 64 before it would be a short position. ALSN, which is Allison Transmissions. This is going to tell you a great deal about uh, the trucking business uh, and uh, big uh, Ford Dooleys and uh, Chevy Dooleys and Dodge Dooleys. Uh, pretty nice on this one. Let's take a look at this one, retracement. Eh, it's doing it twice. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we have. Yeah, you did about a 50% retracement on that. So we'll look at that. Okay. Alexion Pharmaceuticals pretty much came down to the gap uh, that goes back, almost two gaps actually, go back to February 12th. Those had uh, 1.7 million shares and uh, 300,000 shares. So you got into that with about 2 million shares on Thursday. Pop today but just no juice. That one looks fairly weak. And of course, we talked last week about the IBB and all of these. Doesn't look any better today. We come back, we'll continue going through uh, stocks and earnings this week. Uh, nothing really stands out right at the moment, but we'll see. We've got another segment to go. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back. Uh, continue looking at uh, this. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ameritrade, as we look at this as we go on. Certainly to, to AMD. And, you know, just, again, going sideways, I don't see a lot in that one. Amazon um, back up to and through its resistance level of this big day down with 11 million shares. That was back on uh, October the 10th. Yeah, actually 11 million shares on that day. Uh, into it now with 2.6 million shares today. But uh, we'll look at that. Um, ATI. Okay. Allegheny Technologies, ATI, and yeah, we talked about that, AVB, which is Avalon Bay Communities. Kind of interesting that uh, we're seeing some of the weakness that we are uh, in housing. Uh, numbers this morning pretty much said that high-end housing is dramatically down in the last 30 days after being up. The previous 30 days really looks like a lot of people were fighting to get their closings in and now it's uh dropped to a whole lot lower of that azn which is uh, astrazeneca now this gap up on earnings back on the 14th of february that happened with uh 12.4 million shares just got into it with five and a half million shares on friday or on thursday Today, you only have about 3 million shares. There's a double gap right here at 37 bucks, and that's where I suspect it's going. We already talked about uh, Boeing. Let's talk about Baby, which is not a, uh, not a baby. This one actually is setting up very good. I got out of it, thank God, but I wouldn't have only lost a dollar on a $25 stock, so not the worst thing in the world. Uh, but uh, certainly it didn't move much. I think it got out with 50 or 60 cent loss on this. Um, so basically flat. Uh, this thing went sideways for a very long time. Did look very good up until last Wednesday uh, when it dropped down. But you still didn't really get any kind of volume. And uh, you haven't at least last couple of days. Any close back up into the trading range. And this one will look fairly good. It's not like many of them. BIIB, which blew apart also on earnings uh, in the biotech space. This one uh, tended to do this. We caught it once uh, with a put and made a bunch of money. I think, it, what was it, 600%? It's been a few years ago. I didn't see any. It, it kind of had the same setup. Um, I just didn't see it as clearly as I did a few years ago. Uh, certainly down strongly on March 21st. That was uh, 22 million shares. Uh, you did come back uh, and make a low on March 25th at 216.12. That was with eight and a half million shares. 
And you kind of got into those candles on Thursday uh, with, uh, eh, let's call it 2.34, two and eh, two and three quarters million shares. So coming back here and testing fairly light. But again, as long as uh, we have uh, some true um, revolutionaries in the uh, government who want to uh, who think socialism is the way to go for health care, um, you got to kind of stay away from it. That is their target. You are better places uh, to go and uh, and uh, go fishing, let me put it that way, than that. Bloomin Brands, which I th think is coming up on Friday, if I'm not mistaken. Gap higher on the 14th of February. Uh, looked fairly good. Now we're coming back in. Uh, to these, um, that gap higher it came on 4.7 million shares. Got into it on Wednesday of last week with 1.2 million shares. And of course, uh, to, to, to what do we have here? Thursday, he had 1.1 million shares. Not doing much today, but just 500,000 shares. But that one actually looks fairly good if you could get anything going. And what do we have? Bristol Myers Squibb. Certainly this gap uh, move higher, or actually gap lower, on the 3rd of January was one of the first to fail. You did that with 80.4 million shares. Got back into it on Friday with 23, 24 million shares today, about 9.6 million shares so far. Okay. Bro, B-R-O, what is this one? Brown and Brown. I think they're an insurance company. Um, trying to get back into this high of September 14th. That was $31.37. 1.7 million shares. Did it with less than a million shares last Wednesday and a little bit of a pullback, but no signal so far. Uh, Boston Scientific uh, double topped. Uh, did so, though, with higher volume. So this one might be interesting back to 41 bucks. No real signals yet, though. Caterpillar, as we talked about this one, um, a multitude of times trying to top out. Um, let's do this. Um, 140.65 on December 3rd of last year. 140.65 with, you know, let's call it 9.4 million shares. Got into it with 4.4 million shares February 25th. On last Thursday, came into it with 4.5 million shares. Tried to make a newer high and now back into the trading range once again. Uh, we talked about CMG, CNC. How about, uh, what is that CNC? Uh, Centene Corporation did break through on lower volume than the March 27th low. That was a 49.65 with, uh, is that, yeah, 35 million shares. Uh, it's gone below that on last Wednesday with 20 million shares on Thursday. 18 million shares, and about 5.6 million shares so far today. COF, which is Capital One Financial, uh, credit card companies have been kind of weak. This has gotten back up, made a new high, and has done nothing but go sideways for five days now without any kind of signals. Uh, you could call that at least a break above this trading range of about 85 bucks without a sign of strength and no follow through so far, but you're probably gonna hang there till we have earnings. Okay, what else? Cabot Oil and Gas, eh, off a little bit. I don't see, you know, shy about 3 million shares at this $27 high. Eh, certainly didn't have much off this February 8th low though. So kind of very light energy on the way back up. Canadian specific, uh, specific, Canadian Pacific. We've got a few railroads coming out this week. This is one of them. We are right up to the previous high at 710,000 shares from the December 3rd high. That was 216.55. So what do we have today? 223,000 shares going up against that 700,000 share high of December 3rd. Take a look at that one. We'll be back. We'll be back.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien. Ryan, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we'll do a little wrap up here, and that is we're flat on the S&P cash. Let me update this just to make sure. Uh, flat on the S&P cash, which I'm not expecting a whole lot. Again, Whirlpool after the bell tonight. Um, that puts us in. Dow's off 50. NASDAQ's down about 10. Russell's off uh, about 10. So we've got that. Uh, off about four on Boeing, which is kind of a lot of the weight on the Dow. Everything else is pretty much flat, awaiting a lot of that earnings tomorrow morning. Um, anything else going on? Got a question about Tesla. Um, Tesla had a bad weekend, or Elon Musk did. Uh, one of his capsules uh, blew up. A lot of orange uh, smoke, which is a hypergolic propellant. It was orange, so it can only be one thing. Um, but uh, that's extremely toxic, by the way. Uh, so if the, the, uh, if the capsule blow up, didn't kill them then, the toxic gas probably would have. Uh, it's down about 10 bucks today, so I don't know if you can bring up anything. I think earnings are after the bell on Wednesday. Um, I continue, as I said the last few years, to think that Tesla's actual value is somewhere around 40 bucks. It may be one of the more overpriced stocks, certainly in automotive history. Um, don't know if there's a lot uh, else out here to talk about. Uh, but again, as I said yesterday, the 
or yesterday, as I said earlier in the show, the uh, Chinese curse is may you live in interesting times. And those interesting times start a little bit after the bell tonight with Whirlpool. But uh, man, do they get fired up tomorrow morning and they won't quit till Friday morning. Uh, and of course, uh, weeks and weeks and weeks of earnings to come. So uh, yeah, find us on your AM dial or FM. Uh, and uh, I think that's about it. Uh, get ready to rumble. And I'll see you back here at 4 o'clock. We'll talk about how Whirlpool did and some of the other wrap-ups for the show. So when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow.